Well, hello everyone, it's Jordan Pally here, and before we start the video, I would like to tell you that um, last week, I went on the Good Fight Ministries All Love and Discernment Youth Camp, and I had a lot of fun there, and it was a great time. And I really enjoyed the fellowship there. And now, on to the video. Well, hello everyone. Today I will be exposing the framework hypothesis. Alright, so, the framework hypo hypothesis is a false doctrine that adds to scripture and takes Genesis 1 out of context. The context of, of the word day in the verses that says, on the evening and the morning were the number day, means a literal 24-hour day. And the framework hypothesis seeks to change this. And because of this, the framework hypothesis takes Genesis 1 out of context, and therefore twists scripture. If you take scripture out of context, then you twist scripture. The Bible warns against adding or taking away from scripture. The framework hypothesis attempts to add to Genesis 1, which is enough to make the framework hypothesis a fabricated doctrine. Let's view Genesis 1, 14 through 19. And God said, that the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and that the dry lands appear. And it was so. And God called the dry lands earth and the gathering together of the waters called he sees, and God saw that it was good, and God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruits tree yielding fruits after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb, um, yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, that there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And that them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years and set them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God sets them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day, and over the night, and to divide the lights from the darkness, and God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Genesis 1, 9-19, KJV. Oh, um, well, we actually meant, um, Genesis 1, 9-19, not Genesis 1, 14-19. On the third day of the creation week, God created dry land, grass, herbs, and trees that grow fruit. And on the fourth day of the creation week, the sun, the moon, and the stars were all created. And the amount of time in between the third day of the creation week and the fourth day of the creation week was 24 hours. These biblical facts are enough to refute the framework hypothesis. Since the framework hypothesis takes Genesis 1 out of context, the framework hypothesis is inconsistent with Genesis 1. Um, since the framework hypothesis adds to scripture, and any doctrine that adds to right, so any doctrine that adds or takes away from scripture is false doctrine, since the whole Bible is 100 percent true. Young Earth creationism is completely true while the framework hypothesis is false. It is true that the earth was created in six literal 24-hour days. The creation week is not a fairy tale. On the record of history of creation from the Bible, 
is not a fairy tale. Since everything in the Bible is 100% true and 100% factual. And if you take a look at all the genealogies in the Bible, then you will find that the earth is 6,000 years old. The global flood happened around 1,600 years after creation, and then Jesus Christ was born around 2,400 years after the global flood happened, and then 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And this proves that the earth is 6,000 years old. That's you, Isaiah 45, 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Isaiah 45, 18, KJV. God created the earth in six days. The framework hypothesis was really only created just to satisfy the secular science, which is a false kind of science. The secular science is a false kind of science because the secular science is easily refuted by the Bible, and the Bible is 100% true. Thus view Romans 3, 3 through 4. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written. Um, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Romans 3, 3-4, KJV. God's word will always be better than man's word, no matter what. The Bible is always correct, while on the other hand, man's word is sometimes incorrect. God is not fallible at all, while on the other hand, man is fallible. Man's word is... Okay, so man's word is definitely incorrect if man's word contradicts the Bible, since the Bible is 100% true. We must always choose God's word over man's word. Atheistic dogma and secular dogma are completely false since atheistic dogma and secular dogma are perfectly refuted by the Bible, and the Bible is not a fictional book. The Bible is a factual book filled with how to get, with how to get saved, Bible history, instruction to the Christian or instruction to the church today, and true scientific facts. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ, then I encourage you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We all have sins, and if we die in our sins, then we will end up in hell where there is weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. To get everlasting life in heaven, we need to be saved, and to get saved, all you have to do is to repent and trust alone in Jesus Christ, and works are not required for your salvation. Now let's view John 3.16 and Ephesians 2.8-9. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 KJV For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8-9, KJV Works are not required for your salvation. If you repent and trust alone in Jesus Christ, then you will be saved, and you will get everlasting life in heaven after you die. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, and the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away all of your sins no matter how much you messed up. When we get saved, all of our sins, past, present, and future, are forgiven. Also, keep in mind that we cannot continue to live a life of sin and still be saved, since we cannot trample underfoot the blood of Jesus and we cannot abuse grace. Now let's view Romans 6, 1-2. 
What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we, that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? Romans 6, 1-2, KJV. Romans 6, 1-2 proves that we cannot continue to live a life of sin and still be saved, since we cannot trample underfoot the blood of Jesus and we cannot abuse grace. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. Oh, I mean, well, I, I hope you have, have a nice thing. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And goodbye.